Welcome to the Circle Sessions featuring the Circle of Experts. The Circle of Experts are Yasmin Robles from Robles Designs, Tanisha English Amamu of TJE Communications, and Don the Idea Guy. I'm Brett Johnson from Circle 270 Media Podcast Consultants. Each week, one of the Circle of Experts joins me to talk about some critical aspects of growing your podcast. We focus on marketing, social media, monetization, and website design to help you implement all of these together. This week, Tanisha is here from the Circle of Experts. Uh, Tanisha is on a mission to help small businesses level the playing field through digital marketing solutions. Tanisha, thanks for joining me again today. Of course. Always happy to be here. You know, we, before we jumped on, we started talking about um, uh, if, if we had covered this before, mm -hmm. social media tools. And I, I think we have, but mm -hmm. they change so fast. Yeah. And, and the tools that are out there have actually most of them have implemented AI. Right. So it's it's really if we, you know I know we have in the past, but they're they're kind of new. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you know. Plus, there are also new tools out there. So, um, and let's go over that. Let's start. You know, it's kind of a refresh on social media tools. What do you got? Yeah, and I guess if we couldn't really remember, then maybe we haven't talked about tools enough. I know Probably. I always talk about planning content mm -hmm. and content calendars, but I guess you know yeah. it's also important to have the tools to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um. Exactly. So, so Canva is like a fan favorite. I think everybody loves Canva, except for like real designers. I don't think they like it that much. <laughs> Um, but but Canva is great if you are somebody who has no idea how to use Adobe Suite like me, um, or you are a, a solopreneur or a one-person show and you need to make graphics for your social media or your marketing or whatever that you're doing. Um, Canva has begun to dabble into the AI world. Um, they have like a write, like a writer assist. So as you're like making copy on different graphics, you're able to use their like assistant to help you um, make sure that whatever you're writing is, you know, grammatically correct. And then also, you know, you might want to like freshen it up a little bit. So they have that. They also are just starting to do some like designing with AI. I wouldn't say the that their system will completely create something for you. But if you type in keywords, it does help you to pick out templates to start with. Gotcha. So um, that's definitely something if you're already using Canva, I highly recommend trying those out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another tool that I don't think many people think about or talk about enough is a tool I use called Grammarly. So, you know, I think that you no, know, if even the best copywriter may make a mistake from time to time. Um, so integrating something like Grammarly into your G Suite or into your browser um, so that as you're writing emails or writing social posts, just to kind of have that, you know, a tap on your shoulder if you make a mistake or if there's a way to kind of rewrite something to make it um maybe more condensed, maybe straight to the point. I know that at least millennials, um, I think that we have the tendency to use a lot of filler words, like using the word like, or mm -hmm. literally, yeah. you know, things like that. I, I just, you know, they're kind of ingrained into the culture. So sometimes when you're writing, you write how you talk, um, but using a tool like Grammarly can help just, you know, make sure things are are nice and, and put together properly. The, the, yeah, I've got a free version of it. it that yeah, free version is pretty, pretty strong, yeah. honestly. At least it makes you think because when it highlights what's wrong or what it thinks mm -hmm. is wrong, at least you're thinking about going, oh, well, I, I really do want to say me personally versus like me. And it, it's suggesting you don't have yeah. to use personally there. Well, mm -hmm. if you want to emphasize, that doesn't mean it's right. wrong. Exactly. It just means that, you know, maybe this is something you don't want to consider, but it's like, it's not a hundred percent. I mean, in, mm -hmm. in regards to what you're thinking of doing now, spelling and such. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, right. it's, a, it's a time saver going, Oh yeah. Yeah. That's spelled I, wrong. I was you just know. telling my husband yeah. that I struggle still to this day, spelling the word restaurant <laughs> because I feel like the U in restaurant, like 
doesn't need to be there. Right, right. So, you know, just to have, have that yeah. extra, yeah. <laughs> those extra eyes. And I also use the free version and I think it's huh. perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, if the free version is great, I can only imagine what the paid version is. I like. know. I've, I've not uh, heard anybody use yeah. the paid in regards to what the benefits are. I suppose if you're truly, mm -hmm. truly a writer and you need yeah. the weather nuances it has. Yeah. I would, I would, I would, right. I got to find somebody that uses it and kind of go, what's in the paid version that you really, really like. Yeah. 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 And then doubling back to Canva. So I do have the Canva Pro version mm -hmm. of that because it does give you more access to different templates and elements um, as well as stock images if you need them. But for the longest time, I used the free version of Canva and it worked out perfectly fine. I'm a believer in using a tool in the free version until you can't anymore. Um, so if you're not already in Canva, you know, I would say try it out. Same with Grammarly. If you're not already using it, try it out on the free versions. And then if you feel like you need to upgrade, then, you know, you can do that later. Yeah. And I know we're kind of going backwards in regards to what we just talked about, but a yeah. thought came to my mind about asking about Canva, but this may relate to other things mm -hmm. as well too. So in, in your, mm -hmm. in your opinion, I mean, where is this, where's the, um, the point where you kind of go, okay. I can't do this myself, especially with Canva creating. Like you said, mm -hmm. most graphic art design people, visual people just hate Canva or not yeah. hate it. You know, it's one of those, hey, they feel like they're taking business away from them. Well, you know, there is a mm -hmm. certain point that Canva can't do it, or it's just that you yeah. need professional help with what you're creating. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that line might be that it's one of those? whether it's just you're spending too much time on Canva and not getting it done properly, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it is just a time thing. Yeah. I would say a combination of spending too much time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also feeling like, you know, you just can't quite get it right. Yeah. So I recently, I think I was just having a week of burnout. This was actually last week. I had so much going on. Um, you know, I had a new client that was very particular about, you know, designs and, you know, a bunch of deliverables. And I, I just couldn't really think in that creative mindset. But I follow a girl. Um, I, I do not know her. She's not paying me to say this, but her her Instagram is social docs, like D O X. Mm -hmm. And she sells Canva templates. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go see what she has and I can like buy one of her packages mm -hmm. and then pick it apart, which is what I do with Canva anyway. Like I never pick a design and like that's the design. If it has elements that I like, I'll take it, mm -hmm. pick it apart. I may find like three templates that I like, take it apart, put things mm -hmm. together. So that's what I did. I spent like, I think it was like $50 on a couple templates that she had, got them, picked them apart, and then was able to do what I needed to do because I was spending way too much time yeah. trying to create. Um, and I do track my time in a tool called um, Toggle, which is not on the list that I had, but oh. this is an important tool. It's yeah. T-O-G-G-L. And I used the free version of that for about four years. I think last year was when I started to pay for it because it helps me to track if clients get like 15 hours a month from me. Uh, if I'm getting close to that threshold, I can get an alert versus me having to like manually keep track of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so in Toggle, I'm able to see how much time I'm spending on particular tasks. You can do it per client or per project. And I was just spending mm -hmm. maybe like at least two or three hours working on these designs. Yeah. And I had plenty of other stuff to do. So I was able to look at that and say, okay, we're spending too much time here. What can we do? It's either you pay somebody to do it, yeah. um, or maybe you can, you know, buy some templates from somebody. There's a ton of people that do that. And then, you know, take it and pick it apart and do something different. Yeah. Um, but I know what my limitations are. Like I tell clients, yeah. like I can do social media. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Doing anything beyond that is not quite my skill set. So you may need to hire a real designer who can, you know, pull in different elements and know what fonts go together. Right. You know, that's not that's that's not my thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thinking about what your strengths are. 
Um, and then also making sure you're not spending too much time because you could be doing other stuff. You could be recording your podcast. You could be reaching out to potential, you know, guests on the show. You could be promoting the show instead of, you know, spending time making graphics. Right. Yeah. My, my fault is I, I, I will definitely go into different apps and kind of go, that would be cool. I could do that. And it's totally out of my wheelhouse, but it's like, this app can mm -hmm. make it really simple. And it, it has a lifetime deal that I could probably do it. And it's, I've, I've bought some and backed out in the 60 day window mm -hmm. so many times. I don't know why I don't learn my lesson, yeah. but you know, going to your, <laughs> going to your toggle idea, what came to my mm -hmm. mind is that we always are looking at what I call womb, my womb day, mm -hmm. I work on my business day or work on your podcast day, whatever yeah. it might be. That mm -hmm. could be a really great tool to make sure that mm -hmm. you're marking how much time you are working on yourself, on your podcast, yeah. that you could mm -hmm. look at a week after week going, okay, well, I mean, I spent one hour on my podcast this week. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. Or your business, yeah. whatever it might be. Toggle could actually work for yourself as well. With mm -hmm. flavors. I, I'm going to to try that because I know yeah. I don't put enough time in. I know I don't. Oh yeah. I yeah. track work for myself. Like even right now, I always track the podcast as like professional mm -hmm. development Yeah. or, you know, when we're doing stuff for the chamber, I, you know, a, a tag it as volunteer work. Right. Um, so, you know, that's what I was talking to, um, a Sierra who's mm -hmm. new to the board, um, my account in Touche Financial Solutions. I was talking about how I realized I haven't been spending enough time on professional development um, and was able to justify that by looking at Toggle to see that in yeah. the last six months, I haven't done any professional <laughs> development, yeah. haven't really attended like any conferences that like pertaining to marketing or enhancing my skill set. So I've been spending some time, you know, looking at different things. Actually, Canva is going to be having a conference, I think in May, mm. I think it's in Hollywood, but you can attend virtually, but you only get to see the keynote speaker yeah. virtually for free. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just so happen to be in California or plan to go, it's only ninety five dollars to attend the whole oh, that's day. That's good. Thing. Oh wow! And I believe when I was looking at it, they're going to have some kind of like hands on, like you know, teaching different tips and tricks yeah. with Canva. So nice. Yeah, but yeah. That, Toggle is great. I use yeah. it for myself and yeah. clients too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. A great. I mean, I know, and it falls right in the social media tools. Quite frankly, it yeah. just does. It, yeah, it does. For sure. yeah, even even though we're kind of taking a little bit of sidebar, but tools are tools. Yeah. It comes down to it. What <laughs> else do you have? What, exactly. What What else do you have on your list? Yeah. So another um, tool I have on my list is called Airtable, which I may have talked about before. So you can actually use Airtable in so many different ways. I've seen people use it um, almost like Google Forms kind of style. Mm. I use it for content calendars. Okay. Um, and so essentially what I do is build out the calendar and then there's a way for clients to go in and approve, not approve, um, or give me notes about different content that I'm creating before it gets scheduled to social media. Um, and that's something that if you're working on a team that you and your other hosts or people that you're working with can kind of collaborate on when it comes yeah. to content. And that's what helps me plan out content calendars. Now you can, which I have in the past, create a content calendar using like a Google Sheet. Yeah. Or, or like a, you know, a Excel sheet is something that you can do as well. Um, but Airtable kind of does the work for you. So you don't have to, you know, worry about all the different functions for the sales yeah. to make sure that it's all up to date. Um, but Airtable can also be used to help plan your podcast episodes. Yeah. Um, there's many different uh, forms or I guess templates that they have in Airtable. And I've only been using it one way. I also use the free version. Mm -hmm. um, and every time you invite somebody to an Airtable workspace, I think you earn like $10 rewards. So I have like hundreds of dollars in like rewards. So I've been thinking about, okay, maybe I should just upgrade for a little bit until it runs out just to sure. see if it's worth it. Cause I've yeah. been using it for so long. Right. Um, but yeah, Airtable highly recommend checking that one out. Nice. Too. And I think you yeah. can, um, you can integrate it with like your Google drive, okay. um, with Canva to pull in designs as well. So mm -hmm. 
Love Airtable. I've been using it for at least four years now. Wow. Okay. Super. Mm -hmm. Super. Okay. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah, what I, go ahead. No, sorry. Go. I was just going to say yeah. another tool that I had, um, which I guess could also fall into Airtable if you're able to, mm -hmm. you know, figure that out. Is a shared calendar between you and your team. Um, so this may be helpful just to keep track of important dates. Yeah. So if you know that, you know, we have a, a, a guest coming next week mm -hmm. and keeping track of like, here's when the guest is coming, building up to them coming. How do we want to promote that? So just to help keep everybody on the same page to be aware when important dates are coming up so that you can make sure you're, you get a chance to promote those on social media. Right, right, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I like about everything we've talked about so far is that it's all cloud-based. You don't have yeah. to really download mm -hmm. anything to take a drain on your on your on your computer, which is really nice because yeah. you're, you're doing too. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got enough on your on 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 your unit as it is probably mm -hmm. that it's it's nice to have that cloud option that is just running in the background, kind of that it's not yeah. that much of a drain on your computer. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny with with my grandparents. They, I, I don't think they still quite know what I do, um, but they'll ask questions because I, you know, I just have my laptop or my phone. My grandpa's like, you don't have a drive, like an external drive. I'm like, if I lost my computer today and I go buy a new one. I could still do what I need to do because everything is just in the cloud. Yeah. Now, that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing no. if, you know, we go back to my fear of AI. But <laughs> <laughs> as yeah. of right now, it's working out because everything is just in its own world and I can get into it and connect things to each other yeah. just to make everything work seamlessly. Yeah. Yeah. I know the first time uh, we ended up getting a, an iMac years ago, mm -hmm. uh, my, my dad saw the computer and was like, where's the tower? I said, it's in the, <laughs> it's, it's in the screen. He said, no way. I said, yeah. <sighs> That's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. I said it's actually more powerful. You know, it to a certain degree, it's more powerful than a lot of towers are. You know, that's sort of thing. Yeah, so it's just like, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's just uh, it's eye opening. I yeah, hope. yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. You got anything else on your list? Yes, we have two more things. Okay, cool. So, the next thing is going to be a scheduling tool. Now, I shameless plug. I use Sprout Social. I'm an agency partner, um, so I'm all about Sprout. But there are also Hootsuite, which I think most people have heard of. Um, Buffer is another great tool. So when I was first starting my business and, you know, working on zero dollars, I used Buffer because it was free at the time. I don't know. I think it's like eight dollars now um, to start. Um, mm -hmm. It was free at the time and it was a way to just be able to do the basics of scheduling content. Um, and now Facebook and Instagram, you know, are offering this it Anyway, so you don't have to use any third parties. Um, and then later.com is another great one. Hmm. I will say when, when thinking about social media scheduling tools, there are some tools that have this like quote unquote partnership with Meta and everybody else and some that don't. The ones that don't, I do notice that when you are using the third party to schedule content, engagement may not be as much as if you're Hell using yeah. a partner uh, scheduling tool, or of course, if you're using the meta scheduling tools, like you're yeah. totally fine. So how um, do you know, how do you know they're a partner? Where do you look on those, on those so websites usually, to make sure they are? Yeah. So if you go through um, like usually their like about section okay. and kind of read through the lines, you may be able to tell, but also especially like Sprout Social, it's not a cheap tool. It's it's yeah. a pretty costly tool. I would have those conversations. I would set up demos, which I am I know you can definitely do for Hootsuite, Sprout, mm -hmm. and probably even the other ones where you set up a demo call um, where you'll get on like a Zoom and they'll actually walk you through the platform. And I would ask oh. those questions, yeah. just okay. straight up ask them and and you know, hopefully they'll, they'll be able to tell you um, if they're partners yeah. or not. 
Yeah. Okay. Good. That's, but I know that's like a, that's a great head. That's a great heads up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, yeah. That, the ones that have been stuff. around for a while are usually already like mm-hmm. in in the clear there. Yeah. But some of the newer ones, you just got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to ask yeah. you that question: whether do you mm-hmm. see you being throttled basically if you don't use anything outside of Meta's dashboard? You know, the the, the business suite, at least for the Facebook oh, and Instagram. Yeah. But if if it's a mm-hmm. partner, then it pretty much answers that question. Okay. Yeah, if it's a partner, it's better. But if yeah. you're using Meta, it's the best. Of, yeah, of course. course, they yeah, of they course. prioritize um, their tools and all their stuff. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be, you know, making sure those things get priority. And yeah. then posting natively if you have time, mm-hmm. um, which you know, natively for those who don't know means like you know, you literally open. Look at me. I uh, said literally. We talked about grammarly <laughs> earlier. But, but you, <laughs> I'm a millennial. But, but I'm a millennial. But, but, Sorry. But the, but the literally right there was perfect for it. That that's right. <laughs> yes. That's that's where you use it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but if you open Instagram and post right there from the app or open Facebook and post right there from the app, that's considered a native post. Um, and those typically perform better as well. Yeah, makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then lastly, um, everybody forgets about email, but email marketing truly has the mm-hmm. highest return on investment than any other marketing tactic out there because it allows you to have that direct contact with your people. Um, SMS, I would argue, is probably second best. The only thing with SMS is that those messages have to be super condensed and to the point. You don't really get a chance to send like a full message. Um, And then also some people hate getting marketed text messages, but some people are okay with it. Um, But most people have an email address. I think um, they said like for every billion people in the world, like on average, people have at least two email addresses. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... Definitely email. I use MailChimp. I'm also a MailChimp partner, so that's a shameless plug. But I have used Constant Contact, which is great. Um, Clavio or Clavio is another tool that, or another email marketing platform that's great. Um, and Omnisend is another one. Hmm. Now, if you have like a website built through like Shopify or Squarespace, those platforms have email marketing capabilities built into the websites, um, which are also great because, you know, if people are buying stuff, like if you have merch, like I know a lot of podcasts have merch um, and accessories and things like that, or exclusive Mm -hmm. content, you can sell those through your website and then automatically trigger people into email campaigns directly from your website. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's super. Yeah. Those are some great options. Yeah, because I know everybody's really pretty familiar with MailChimp and Constant Contact, but yeah. they all seem mm-hmm. to be kind of the same kind of. I mean, Honestly, you know, they all have to yeah. look, but but it comes down to mm-hmm. price point. Or if you're used to, you know, that look, then yeah, go for it. Mm-hmm. But, but I agree, it truly comes down down to the price. MailChimp through the years have made a lot of adjustments uh, to their pricing. You know what's a okay or allowed in the free version versus like now you have to pay for things that used to be free. So I would recommend shopping around. Generally, when you log into these tools on the back end, the way that it works is pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah. There's not, you know, too much of a difference. In the past, I actually left MailChimp to go to another great tool called Active Campaign mm-hmm. um, because it could do things that at the time MailChimp could not do. Mm. Um, and then I later went back to MailChimp because that's what most of my clients were using. Oh. So it was easier to, you know, um, be able to switch back and forth between yeah. everybody's accounts versus, mm-hmm. you know, having to log into different stuff. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I could see that too. If you're working with, uh, with a variety of people that have the same platform, it's just easier to get your mindset. It's like a mind shift to kind of go yeah. into constant contact and say, like, Oh, wait a minute, that's not there. That's here, you know, for, for right. mailship and such. So mm-hmm. it makes it easier. I could see that. And especially if you're yeah. working with a couple of different podcasts and you know, that's sort of thing to do mm-hmm. it. But, you know, I, I agree that the, I, I, up until, you know, I, I started, you know, doing this consultancy, for for podcasting and stuff, I really wasn't a big email fan. I didn't get it, and walking mm-hmm. into it now, it's like, yeah, 
if, it, it may be one of the few grounds, the few opportunities to own your audience without somebody taking yeah. it away from you. You know, mm -hmm. that I mean, you, even today, like we're recording this on today's March 5th. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you noticed, but earlier today, Facebook and Instagram went down for yeah. like half the day. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. So, yeah. Therefore, you have no access. You can't post. You can't do you anything. Can't. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything. I mean, of course, email and email newsletter, of course, email can go down. Google can go right. down and such, but right. more than likely not, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, they, 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 it, it's just, a, it, it, it probably works in your favor not to, you know, um, mm -hmm. rely on that. But no, I agree that 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 was the email addresses are, and especially when you see the open rates, when you have, when you finally curate content. Mm -hmm. that that people open up and want to read and you see the click throughs my wife is yeah. always amazed when she sends her emails out and she she loves watching the analytics in the background going <laughs> oh my gosh you know within 15 minutes half half of them have opened already you know she just yeah. loves seeing that it, you know she says this is so weird big brother have you I showed say, her you, where you know. she can see how many times each person has opened then she'll I, really get a kick out of that <laughs> yeah i haven't opened that up yet she just loves the numbers because i said you know it's, it's usually in the 50 60 percent range that open that's it up awesome. and i said yeah, hon, you're doing great. I mean, yeah. you know, that's way above average that you know, you're, creating above. you're creating content that people are number one, opening up quickly that they see it come through and they yeah. say, Oh yeah, I want to see that what, what's coming from you and that they're reading it and you know, that sort of thing that and after a while we'll get in the nitty gritty about like the click through rate and where they're going and stuff. And, and I think she'll see, yeah. you know, we'll have to, uh, uh, make some better content on those news newsletters that she sees that, you know, that, that there is a click through yeah, option. And that's just like the promotion. beauty the beauty of email is that you get to directly connect with people. And when people see your name and your email come up there, they can, you know, connect with it versus I love social media, but it's so congested with so much content. The algorithm is always changing. As we all know, there's a lot of like pay to play going on that, you know, people who may love you may not see your content on social media, but they'll probably see it in email and be able to stay in the know, stay up to date on all the things that you have going on because you're sending those emails out. Right. So right. that's great. Especially if it's timely information that you just, you know, if something's happening in a couple of days and you see it in your own social media feed too, that, wait mm -hmm. a minute, I'm connected to this company, this person, and they sent this out three days ago. And it's saying happen yeah. tomorrow. So it can happen to you right. too, uh, as a podcaster, as a business owner of sending, a, you know, relying on social media, just because you put it mm -hmm. out there doesn't mean that people are seeing it that day. So exactly. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. Exactly. So this yeah. is a great list. So if, if anybody has any questions or maybe other suggestions, or just want to talk to you about, Hey, how do you use Airtable? You know, you know, kind of pick your yeah. brain about you know, some of those things. How can they get a hold of you? Yes, you can go to my website, tjecommunications.com, and sign up for a free 15 minute consultation. I do them every Tuesday. So just pick a time and we can chat. Um, and I'm also all over social media as tjecom, C O M M. Super. Yeah. If you want to connect with me, want to talk about any of this, especially your podcast, you can get my calendar. It's Circle 270 Media Podcast Consultants. That website is circle270media.com. I'm on social as well, too. Facebook, uh, Circle 270 Media, LinkedIn. You can look under uh, Brett H. Johnson, actually. But, you know, that uh, I'm there. If you, you, if you punch in Circle 270 Media on LinkedIn, it's going to pop up. So connect with me anywhere. But, yeah, for sure, head to um, circle270media.com is the best place for me. And uh, thanks again, Tanisha. Can't wait for the next episode. Of course. Thank you.